Okay, I still see quite a few people coming in. Uh, for all that are coming in the door, we have a lot of seats up front. Also, I'd like to just establish some ground rules um, that we usually partake here. We have a large crowd tonight, and I'm assuming that we're going to have people speaking to a lot of different articles. I just ask that um, you let everyone speak once to an article before you speak twice. And I would like to keep the comments and questions topic based to the warrant article. Um, I will, I will stop you if you get off track because we have a lot of things to get through tonight and I'm going to try and keep this orderly as possible. So just be aware of that. Please be courteous. If you've already spoken to an article, let somebody go in front of you to speak to it before you speak a second time. Thank you very much. The first order of business is we are going to do what we call a consent article. We've done this for the last few years and it seems to move things right along. This will inter entertain articles 1, 2, 3, 10, and 23. So I'll allow a few moments for you people to look at them. I have a motion and a second. Please take a chance to look at those. If you have any questions, we have two microphones that you can line up behind and ask those questions. One, two, three, 10, and 23. And just for people's quick reference, uh, article one pertains to grants. Article two is chapter 90 money. Article three is temporary borrowing. Um, article 10 is the water filtration stabilization and article 23 is the article for the CPA fund administrative set asides. Mr. Devine, would you like to come up and just say a quick word about the first three articles in this consent article? Okay. So if anybody has a question, uh, please come to one of the microphones. Otherwise, I'm going to entertain a vote. Right. Seeing none, all in favor of the consenting articles, please raise your gray card. All opposed? They pass unanimously. Thank you. Article 4. Article 4 pertains to revolving fund. To see if the town will vote to authorize the following revolving funds for certain town departments under Mass General Law Chapter 44, Section 53, E and a half for fiscal year beginning July of 2016. And if you turn the page, those are all of the revolving funds that we have. Yes. In the, mo in the motion will read, move that the town authorize revolving funds under Mass General Law Chapter 44, Section 53 E and a half for fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2016 as printed in the warrant. Do I have a motion? Second. Motion has been moved and seconded. Any discussion for um, Article 4? Seeing none, all in favor, please signify by raising your gray card. Opposed? Abstentions. Passes unanimously.
Article 5 is revolving funds, special revolving funds. And the motion reads, move that the town will vote to amend the fiscal 2016 select board budget as follows. From salary chair, $1,400 to $1,400. Oh, excuse me. Wrong page, sorry about that. Motion for Article 5, move that the town authorize revolving funds under Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53, E and a half, for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, um, I think that's supposed to be 2000, 2015. So, do I hear a motion? Second? Discussion. Selectwoman Chunglo, would you like to say a few words? This is a housekeeping article. The revolving fund permits the use of payment from the University of Massachusetts for a mobile automated signboard. The signboard is used for public safety, especially events at the university and traffic monitoring. There is no impact on taxes for this article. Yeah, sure. Mr. Uh, Selectman Pichinski. Just a point of interest about this. I don't think the police chief's going to like this when I say it, but I think it has to be said. Uh, if you go by on the road, you see the message board, it says thank you for driving safely, that's placed all over town. Just a heads up, that message board has a camera in it. So if you go by that message board 60 miles an hour, it televises it back to the police station. Uh, so that's just a little heads up for you people to slow down when you go by that. If somebody out of town, I guess it's too bad. Well, that clears that up. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions? Seeing none, all in favor, signify with your green card. Opposed? Article passes. Yes. Article 6. Move that the town will vote to amend the 2016 select board budget as follows. Line item 122, salary, chair, 1400 to 1400. Don't ask me why it's there if we're keeping it the same. But salary, members, 4800, 4800. Select board, other salaries, $47,420 to zero. And select board salaries and expenses from 13675 to $61,095. And Chairwoman Ke um, Keegan will speak to this. Okay, Article 6. Um, this is a housekeeping article. Um, for the current fiscal year, uh, select board has hired a temporary worker and this article helps avoid any salary withholdings um, for a worker who is classified as a vendor. So there is no impact on taxes for this article. Do we have a motion and a second? Second. Any questions for article six? Everyone in favor, please signify with your gray card. Opposed? Passes unanimously. Chairwoman Keegan would like to say a few words. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, just before we get too much further along in, in tonight's agenda, um, just a few talking points. Um, 
There's an awful lot going on uh, in the articles this evening, a lot of monetary articles, and we just wanted to give you a little bit of context and background, hopefully to help with the decision-making process of town meeting tonight. Um, just by way of history, over two years ago, the select board formed a municipal building committee to help evaluate the condition and the future use of non-school municipal buildings. Um, by all accounts, they've done a, a fantastic job, and we can't say enough about how much we appreciate the hard work that the committee's put in. The committee initially identified certain immediate maintenance needs and offered recommendations to stop the deterioration of our town assets and also to improve safety for those who use the buildings. The committee also spent significant time working with departments to determine current and future space considerations. But in order to answer that question, we need to understand what services are being provided, how we're providing them, and what the future might look like in terms of expanded services or an alternate form of delivery for the services currently being provided. It's a monumental task. And to make matters even more complex, we also need to incorporate opportunities that may have presented themselves during that process in the form of available grant funding for a new library, and also constraints that need to be taken into consideration, such as historic preservation concerns, zoning restrictions, and the like. To put it bluntly, the situation is not ideal. Um, it would be wonderful to have these things happen in a very linear, logical order. But as they say, things happen quickly in life. Um, and again, it's a very complex situation. But I would also argue that it's not dire by any means. In short, we need a plan, an overall plan that looks out over, over a multiple year time horizon, not just in a one year basis, which in turn now brings us to the budget that's going to be presented to town meeting tonight. As previously projected, for those of you who have attended town meeting before, we are at a point where the current revenues generated are not sufficient to cover the level services operating budget. The Finance Committee, our departments, and Select Board have worked very hard to present a balanced budget to you. To accomplish this, certain items, such as the OPEB contribution, cost of living increases for some municipal workers, um, and other items have been uh, and then reduction in the school's requested amount have been deferred to fall town meeting. And you'll be hearing more about that later on. And that still leaves us with a shortfall of about $140,000. This budget does not take into account possible expansion of services for public safety that the select board is currently deeming a priority, nor other capital needs such as water and sewer infrastructure yet to be scoped out and determined. So, you know, again, for those of you who have attended town meeting before, this is actually how we've handled the budget in the past. I think if you recall last year, we faced a similar set of circumstances and we did um, make an argument to defer some of these items to the fall town meeting and we're doing that again this year. But in the spirit of making an informed and thoughtful decision on how best to bridge the gap, that $140,000, either through a reduction in expenses, enhancement of revenues, or a combination of those two, uh, processes, we're asking for additional time to continue to work on a five-year town-wide plan. In a few months' time, we'll be looking to our residents to help us determine what services people desire and also what services people are willing to pay for. We feel making arbitrary cuts at this time would be short-sighted and actually potentially harmful. So a little bit of context for all of you tonight as you proceed with your decision-making. So thank you for the time. Thank you, Chairwoman Keegan. On to Article 7. The motion reads, move that the town transfer from sewer reserves $2,223, transfer from water reserves $1,969, transfer from stabilization $36,853 to cover the costs associated with the fiscal year 2016 budget. Individual line items read police salaries from 878,986 to 903,986. Communication salaries from 229,304 to 232,104. Highway construction salaries from 445, 445,000 $930 to 448783 Wastewater salaries 
from 283,131 to 285,354. And finally, water salaries from $358,342 to $360,311. And then the non-union personnel longevity from zero to 6,200. Do I have a motion? I have a motion in a second. Um, Selectman Devine will speak to Article 7. The town has collect, uh, uh, concluded the negotiation with our three bargaining units. Uh, this article provides the retroactive pay for the unions back to July of 2015. The article also provides for the longevity payment for the non-union personnel. At Fall Town meeting, uh, the stabilization count will be replenished and there will be no, ta no impact on your taxes for this article. The question was the last uh, budget item, what is the non-union and longevity? This was an agreement that the uh, select board reached with the non-union personnel in order to achieve some sort of parity between the benefits that the union people received and the non-union people. Um, so the, that's, that's the explanation. Thank you, David. I believe the fire chief is on that. <laughs> oh, excuse me, that's right. He, he wears multiple hats in town of Hadley. Mr. Freeman, I have a question. Andy, Andy Morris Freeman, 45 Roosevelt Street. So we're taking money from free cash, sewer reserves, water reserves, and stabilization. Can you tell me what borrowing from these funds will do to the amount of money in each fund? Does anybody have, do you have the balances? One second, please. Okay. Um, sewer reserves, the amount available at this time is $708,048. Water reserves, at this time, there is $768,307. And um, general stabilization is $2,142,930.24. Sir, if you have a question, you need to go to the microphone so everybody can hear you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Deborah Levinson, 14 Holly Road. Looks like the police salaries are about 25000 over the budgeted amount. I wonder if someone could speak to why that is and what's being done so that it's not repeated next year. Mr. Devine? Chief Mason? Chief Mason, step up to the microphone so everybody can see you. I'm not exactly sure what she means by the budgeted amount. These are retroactive payments for the unions that, that the, the union officers and communication staff negotiated with the town, which began July 1, 2015. This this is a, basically a retroactive payment for what they've worked since then to cover those costs. To answer your question, moving forward, those numbers from that negotiation will be in future budgets, but they'll be in an aggregate, so there won't be the additional amount. I think that's what she's getting to. Did I answer that? Well, what is that first number then? To, to, $25,000 roughly, and that's for the retro pay during the negotiation process. I mean, the 878,000, 8, that was, isn't that the amount that was budgeted last year? Yeah. 
Mr. Moderator, this is simply a timing issue. Uh, when we met at the fall town meeting to set the budget in its final form for the current fiscal year, we had not concluded any of our contract negotiations with the collective bargaining units. Uh, we had police, we had dispatch, we had DPW still uh, were in active negotiations. Uh, we had a very productive uh, set of negotiations. We were able to get uh, the union to agree to a number of concessions uh, in exchange for which uh, they asked for some extra pay. This extra pay is uh, represented in the article that's before you right now. It would be retroactive back to July 1st, 2015. So that's the reason why we're coming to you now is because the contracts were negotiated and concluded after the town meeting. And so this is the next available opportunity for us to provide that extra pay and implement those uh, three union contracts. Sir, you have a question? Yeah, Jonah Bruger, 21 Norwatic Drive. Um, the 25 grand in discussion, what increase uh, as a percentage of salary is that? For those of us bad at math. What was it? One and a half retro. That was a one and a half retro payment. All right, great, thank you. Yep. John Metzgowski for Sunrise Drive. Why isn't there in, a, in the union uh, negotiation and, and before the contract the language in there contingent upon funding? I should think that would be in you guys make deals, you make all this stuff, and then the taxpayers and voters sitting here uh, have to vote it because then you turn around they, they would sue, sue the town for a violation of a contract. You know, I, I just believe it should be in there. Thank you. Any other questions? Would you like to speak to it? I do. Sure. Um, select woman, I almost said chairwoman, Chungle. This isn't anything new. For the past 15 years that I've been negotiating or over that because I did the school committee too, all of these contract negotiations have to come back to town meeting for approval. We negotiate in good faith with all of our unions and it has to come before you uh, for approval. But we hope that you trust us that we're voting the best contract for the town and that's what we do. Thank you, sir. Chet Abel, 127 East Street. Um, is this going to be something that's going to be negotiated every year, or is this contract good for one, two, three, four years? It was a three-year contract, correct? Uh, for all, all of them. So we won't hear about this again for three years? Correct. And <clears throat> the reserves. Is yes. anything else committed out of the reserves? Not at this time, right? Committed out of the reserves? There are, there are articles within this meeting coming up that are talking about using stabilization monies of different kinds, but at this time, through this article, this is the only stabilization money that's been used. In the future, is it possible to, <clears throat> for the townspeople, to have to the balances? Able, for the townspeople to be able to see the total effect rather than individual articles and have to figure it out for themselves. We can work that out. Finance committee, I, I believe they would support that. We'll take a note, thank you, sir. Any other questions in regards to Article 7? Seeing none, all in favor, signify by raising your gray card. Any opposed? Any abstaining? Article 7 passes unanimously.